Now at noon, honoring a Washington deputy killed in the line of duty. We feel your hearts, prayers, and goodness surrounding us, and it gives us great comfort. Everybody's grieving, but we're pulling together. An outpouring of support as law enforcement officers and the community come together to remember Deputy DeRosier. And we are in for some warmer weather. How long the sunshine will stick around, plus. Bullard with 47 tonight, working it down to two to one, a deep three. Oh! Go! Blazers win the series! The Blazers now on to round two after Damian Lillard nails this amazing buzzer beater. KGW News starts right now. And we begin this noon with family, friends, and law enforcement from all over Oregon and Washington paying tribute to Cowlitz County Deputy Justin DeRosier. And just a few hours ago, Sky 8 flew overhead as over 100 police vehicles lined the streets for a special memorial procession. Thank you for joining us this noon. I'm Nina Melhoff. We are seeing a huge show of community support for Deputy DeRosier. He was shot and killed by a suspect on April 14th. Let's get right to our live team coverage for you, starting with our Tim Gordon. Now, Tim, you're in Longview, where that procession started just a few hours ago. Well, Nina, we're at the Cowlitz County Fairgrounds. Hundreds of officers and others connected to Justin DeRosier arrived here this morning to escort the fallen deputy to Portland. Starting with the roar of the motorcycle police, 150 law enforcement vehicles made their way as part of the motorcade, a synchronized effort to honor one of their own. As the procession left the area, we got a view from our Fly 8 drone. Dozens and dozens of local officers took part. They also came from as far away as Canada and New York. In the hearse lay the deputy they came to shepherd on his final journey. 29-year-old Justin DeRosier touched a lot of lives in his short law enforcement career, including an Island County, Washington deputy whose mom and dad live in Longview. Yeah, he was part of my son's training over at WSU. Uh, through the police intern program when Justin was part of the Whitman County Sheriff's Department. So, yeah, my son has a direct tie to Justin, and so he, he's actually on his way down to, to be here and support and, yeah, to, and to remember. From Sky 8, you can see the procession traveling the 45-mile journey to Portland. People on overpasses paying their respects all along the way. And back in Longview, everyone feels the love and support coming out of this tragedy. It's amazing and it shows where people's hearts really are. There's lots of empathy. It just is wonderful. Where I live, down on where the uh, procession's gonna go, my friends and neighbors are all getting out their chairs and you know, gonna sit and be supportive. What else? You do everything you can. A tough day, no doubt, but also an inspiring one. You know, I talked to one officer from Kelso, where DeRosier grew up and graduated high school. He said he couldn't talk to us on camera, not for any official reason, but simply because he is just still too broken up about what's happened to talk. Tough time up here. Guys, back to you. No doubt. All right. Thank you, Tim. Let's go to Maggie Vespa on the University of Portland campus this noon. And Maggie, that procession just ended there at the Child Center. Yeah, Nina, that's right. It ended basically on foot. In fact, I'll just back out of the way here and show you. You can see where that van is. There was a small crowd there a moment ago. The flag to the right of it, obviously, at half mast. Media stay back out of respect, but one of our cameras was given a vantage point, so I'll show you that video here. It was shot about 20 minutes ago. Law enforcement from several agencies are here coordinating all of this. Family and friends obviously standing by and just taking the moment in. Again, this is just outside the Child Center on campus, which is expected to be packed today. For some perspective, it holds 4,800 plus at full capacity. Now, we do expect to hear from a variety of loved ones here today who knew and loved the 29-year-old husband and father, Deputy Justin DeRosier. A couple of days ago, his family spoke for the first time about all of this. His sister, Jenna, had this to say. Law enforcement was more than just his job. It was Justin's calling. 
We truly believe had Justin known that that call was his last, he would have still gone. He was that kind of man. On behalf of Justin's family and close friends, I would like to extend our profound thanks to all men and women in law enforcement. So again, that was a couple of days ago on Monday. Here today, doors for Deputy Justin DeRozier's memorial opened here at the Child Center. At 11, the memorial begins at 1. Back out here live, you can see they're just wrapping after the end of that procession. And you can see again, that van is still there, and I think they have moved his casket into the Child Center at this point. If you is basically full. You can also park at the Port of Portland's terminal too and take a shuttle to this area. And then Nina, I know you have information on a plenty, a plethora of other watch options really around the area. So I'll send it back to you in the studio for info on that. That's right, Maggie. Thank you. Yeah, New Life Church in Longview and Kelso High School will also be showing a live feed of the event. We will be streaming it as soon as it starts here uh, in the next hour. You can go to KGW.com or our Facebook and YouTube pages. Again, that memorial starts at 1 o'clock. In the meantime, people all over the region are helping in any way they can. Christine Pitawanich is in our newsroom this afternoon tracking how much money the community Christine has raised so far for the DeRocher family and it's amazing so far the numbers. Yeah, Nina, it is unbelievable how much love, support that the DeRozier family is getting from the community. So far, many thousands of dollars have already been raised. We're just trying to raise as much money as we can. At Redleaf Organic Coffee, jars are still out, collecting donations for fallen Cowlitz County Deputy Justin DeRozier's family. He was a hero and it's a small town, small community. So far, it has raised about $40,000 in total across its four locations. These donation jars will stay out until the 30th of this month. And Dutch Bros Coffee locations in the Longview Kelso area hopped on board too raising nearly $19,000 after donating 100% of profits for one day. I had to figure out what I could do. Then there's copies today in Kelso. Staff say they've received a number of checks in the mail and $9,000 in cash donations. Add to that, about 24,000 stickers honoring DeRozier have been given out or mailed across the country. There we are. Look on Facebook and you'll find more businesses that have donated to the DeRozier Family Fund. $5,000 in staff donations from Red Canoe Credit Union and $1,800 from Vault Books and Brew in Castle Rock. These just a handful of the businesses coming together, of course with the help of the community, to show a whole lot of love to the DeRozier Family in their time of heartbreak. Also, a memorial fund for DeRozier's family has been set up at U.S. Bank. It's called the Deputy DeRozier Memorial Account. And just so you know, yesterday, Applebee's in Longview announced it'll donate 10% of each bill to DeRozier's family. That will happen on the 30th of this month from 5 o'clock to 9 p.m. We'll have all that information on our website a little later on this morning, kgw.com. Back to you. All right, Christine, thank you. And also in honor of Deputy DeRozier, Governor Kate Brown has has ordered all flags at public buildings to be flown at half staff today from sunrise to sunset. All right, speaking of sunrise, let's get to the weather because yes, the sun has risen and boy, it is beautiful. Not a cloud in the sky on this shot of downtown Portland. Folks getting out for lunch, enjoying this weather. Let's get to meteorologist Rod Hill. The sunshine is out. We're loving it, Rod. Hey, Jake, can we pull out and kind of show that I'm surrounded <laughs> by sunshine? We have Pacific City right here. Look how clear that is. We have Timberline Lodge right here. And look how clear that is. 46 degrees, by the way, up at uh, 6,000 feet. The lodge could hit 50 degrees this afternoon. All areas, literally, are reporting sunny to absolutely clear skies. Here's Hood River. You can just see my Adam sticking up. The forecast in the Hood River Valley today, by the way, up to about 69 degrees. This is the view from the Cathedral Ridge Winery at Hood River. And here's the uh, Stoller Family Estates down the heart of the uh, Willamette Valley wine country. Look how pretty that is. Again, perfectly clear skies and 54 degrees. And here's downtown Portland. See a little action there on the Willamette River. So what's goofy is it was 54 at 11 o'clock. The observation points say it didn't warm between 11 and noon, but the winds are light from the southwest. So I have a, I have a feeling something's 
fishing or probably warmer than the mid 50s outside right now. I still have us up to about 66 to 4 o'clock. We'll be in the upper 50s at 8 p.m. We have warmer temperatures coming tomorrow and the rain chance that was this big coming up is now more like that. We'll talk about that in the seven day forecast. We like that, Rod. Thanks. <laughs> Lillard with 47 tonight, working it down to two to one, a deep three. Oh! Go! What? Blazers win the series, a walk-off three from Lillard. Bye-bye, Thunder. What a way to end the series. Did you guys stay up and watch this? I hope you did. It is one of the best Blazer games in history. We are going to the Western Conference semifinals thanks to that 37 foot buzzer beater by Dame himself. He said last night it was the best game of his career. I believe it. KGW's Orlando Sanchez, you sir were in the Motor Center last night. Everyone talking about this crazy shot, jumping out of their seats, grabbing their heads because this game was all over the place. Nina, first and foremost, I got to ask you, how are you doing? How are you holding up? Because I'm on one and a half hours sleep. That's I'm, it. But I I'm know fine. it. It was worth it. I know you speak for a lot of people today out in Portland in general who are just recovering from what happened last night. So many people just trying to get some sleep and they couldn't because they were so amped up by one of the most amazing performances in Portland Trail Blazers history. You mentioned Damian Lillard called it his best game. Head coach Terry Stotts, he said it was probably the best individual performance he's seen in person. And I gotta tell you, it was epic. It's one of those moments that people will look back on and say, where were you when Damian Lillard hit the shot and waved goodbye to the Oklahoma City Thunder to close out a series in the playoffs? The emotion, the elation from inside that building was one that I will personally never forget. It gives me goosebumps just thinking about that moment. Damian Lillard was on fire. Individually, we mentioned the 50-point performance he put up. No one in Portland Trailblazers hit history has ever scored that many points in a single playoff game. He knocked down 10 three-pointers. No one in Portland Trail Blazers history can say they've ever done that. Dame breaking his own record in doing that. Nina, it was a display of excellence and you saw it on the biggest stage. We talk so much about the lack of love that the Portland Trail Blazers get on a national perspective. Well, last night, all eyes were on the Blazers and what Damian Lillard was able to do, coming as close to as you can to single-handedly winning a game for a team when the lights are the brightest. And don't you love that swagger? Like, he didn't even crack a smile. He just said, bye-bye. And then, I mean, where were yes. you kind of standing or sitting when this all went down? Like, his sister, his brother ran out there. <laughs> People from the stands were running out. Security was trying to catch them. What was your perspective? Nina, as you mentioned, it was the most cold-blooded <laughs> display of clutchness to knock down that shot and to be as cool, calm, and collected as Damian Lillard is just speaks volumes about who this guy is. And yeah, you mentioned him being able to hug his brother, his family, everyone on the sidelines, and just really soak in the moment. He walked around the Moda Center and acknowledged all the fans, and part of that was because of how last year went. Remember, this team got embarrassed as the three seed, getting swept out of their own building, going on the road and getting smoked by the Pelicans. This was a year, if not two years in the making to have a moment like this. It was something that the city of Portland has craved. Blazers fans have been thirsting for for so long. And of course the team in general. I was up in about the 200 section facing the basket that he made that shot at. You might even be able to see me way up there. And uh, just to see the shot, some people were in shock. Some people couldn't believe what they saw. Others were just screaming at the top of their lungs. The yeah. loudest I you think I've to. ever been in that to. building. It was going down to the wire. I was like, what is he doing? You know, we're going to run out of time. Are we just going to go to overtime? Amazing. Orlando, I know you got a lot more to work on today. Thank you, my friend, for taking the time here at noon. Get some rest, Nina. Yes, I'm going we to sleep after this. We need second round energy. All right, Orlando, thanks. So, of course, a lot of you are reacting to the win. We want to show you a couple of viewer comments. Viewer Pauline says, all I could do was grab my head. Great shot, great game. I'm right with you, Pauline. I jumped off the couch. Dijon said, I still can't put into words what this game and that shot means to me after 15 years of being a Blazers fan. 
Yes, I agree. Andrew, I feel ashamed and guilty for picking the Thunder to win this series. You're not the only one, man. I think I did the same thing. The Great Dame is a bad, bad man. Oh, yes, we're going to have lots, lots more on the Blazers and Rip City Mania coming up tonight on the news at 4, 5, and 6.